Hello friends. Christmas is always my favorite time of the year. It's when I get to put up my Christmas tree, wrap my presents, and drink my favorite drinks. Do you know what this is? It always comes around this time of year. Mm. That's right, eggnog. What's your favorite holiday drink? Hot cocoa, some marshmallows, yum. Another one of my favorites is the book, A Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles M. Schultz. In the book, A Charlie Brown Christmas, Charlie Brown is a little mm, depressed. Christmas is not his favorite time of the year. Let's read and figure out why Charlie Brown is depressed and figure out why Christmas isn't his favorite time of the year when it's a holiday that so many of us love all around the world. If this is your first time to my channel, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click that bell. Also, go grab a cup of hot cocoa or eggnog or whatever you drink. Grab your book. Are you ready, friends? Let's go. A, B, C. Read to me. Hello, friends. Let's go. A Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles M. Schultz. Christmas time was here. Soft snowflakes floated down from the sky. The sweet sound of carols filled the air, and everyone felt happy. Well, almost everyone. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. I just don't understand Christmas, I guess. I like getting presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I'm still not happy. I always end up feeling depressed. Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Maybe Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. Charlie Brown thought Linus might be onto something. He decided to go to Lucy's booth for some advice. My sense, please. Charlie Brown dropped a nickel into Lucy's can. Lucy shook the can. Boy, what a sound. How I love to hear that old money clink. That beautiful sound of cold, hard cash. That beautiful, beautiful sound. Nickels, nickels, nickels. That beautiful sound of plinking nickels. All right, now. What seems to be your trouble? I feel depressed. Charlie Brown told her. I think we better pinpoint your fears. If we can find out what you're afraid of, we can label it. Are you afraid of staircases? If you are, then you have climacophobia. Or maybe you have pantophobia. Do you think you have pantophobia? What's pantophobia? The fear of everything. That's it! Charlie Brown cried out. He shouted so loudly that Lucy flew off her chair. Actually, Lucy, my trouble is Christmas. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I feel sort of let down. Lucy knew what would help. You need involvement. You need to get involved in some real Christmas project. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Charlie Brown smiled. He and Lucy made plans to meet at the auditorium. As Lucy went off, Snoopy walked by, holding a box of lights and decorations. Charlie Brown followed him to his doghouse. <laughs> Charlie Brown asked his dog. Snoopy handed him a piece of paper. Charlie Brown began to read aloud. What's this? Find the true meaning of Christmas when money, 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 spectacular, super colossal, neighborhood Christmas lights and display contest. Charlie Brown looked up 
from the paper and groaned. My own dog got commercial. I can't stand it. Oh. Next, Charlie Brown ran into his sister, Sally. I've been looking for you, big brother. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? Well, I don't have much time. I'm supposed to get down to the school auditorium and direct a Christmas play. You write it and I'll tell you what I want to say. Okay, shoot. Dear Santa Claus, how have you been? Did you have a nice summer? How is your wife? I have been extra good this year. So I have a long list of presents that I want. Oh, brother. Please note the size and color of each item and send as many as possible. If it seems too complicated, make it easy on yourself. Just send money. How about tens and twenties? Tens and twenties? Charlie Brown cried. That didn't seem like true Christmas spirit. At the auditorium, Lucy had an announcement. Director? What director? Asked Patty. Charlie Brown! Lucy replied. Oh no, we're doomed! Said Violet. Here he comes! Attention everyone! Here's our director! Charlie Brown addressed the cast, but no one listened to him. They were all dancing as Schroeder played his piano. Stop the music! All right now, we're going to do this play and we're going to do it right. Lucy, get those costumes and scripts and pass them out. Lucy walked up to Frida and gave her a script and a costume. You're the innkeeper's wife. Do innkeeper's wives have naturally curly hair? Frida asked. Lucy walked over to Pigpen. Pigpen, you're the innkeeper. In spite of my outward appearance, I shall try to run a neat inn. Lucy went over to Snoopy. Snoopy, you'll have to be all the animals in our play. Can you be a sheep? <laughs> How about a cow? <laughs> How about a penguin? <laughs> yes, he's even a good penguin. Snoopy waddled around the stage. Soon, all the parts had been handed out, and it was time for Charlie Brown to direct. He asked Schroeder to set the mood for this first scene. But as soon as Schroeder started playing, everyone started dancing again. Lucy and Charlie Brown watched from the side of the stage. Charlie Brown, isn't it a great play? Lucy asked. It's all wrong, Charlie Brown told her. Look, Charlie, let's face it. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket, Lucy said. But Charlie Brown was determined. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial. Look, Charlie Brown, what do you want? Lucy asked. The proper mood. We need a Christmas tree. Lucy thought this was a great idea. Hey, perhaps a tree. A great, big, shiny aluminum Christmas tree. That's it, Charlie Brown. You get the tree. I'll handle this crowd. Okay. I'll take Linus with me. The rest of you practice your lines. Charlie Brown and Linus made their way through the snow to the Christmas tree lot. There were trees in all sizes and colors. Big, bigger, pink, and purple, and red. They were all made of metal or plastic. Gee, do they still make wooden Christmas trees? Linus wondered. And that's when Charlie Brown saw it. The perfect Christmas tree. This little green one here seems to need a home. I don't know, Charlie Brown. Remember what Lucy said? This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care. We'll decorate it, and it'll be just right for our play. Besides, I think it needs me. We're back. Charlie Brown announced as he and Linus brought the little tree into the auditorium. The other kids couldn't believe what they were seeing. This tree was all wrong. You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? Everyone laughed and walked away. Everyone except Linus. (laughs) 
Charlie Brown turned to his friend. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about, said Linus. Linus walked to the center of the stage. A lone spotlight shone on him as he began to speak. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. There was a silence in the auditorium as Linus walked back to Charlie Brown. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown thought about what Linus had said. He picked up the little tree and walked out of the auditorium. Charlie Brown looked up at the starry night sky. He finally understood the meaning of Christmas. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and decorate it. And I'll show him it really will work in our play. Charlie Brown took his tree to a place where he knew there would be a lot of decorations. Snoopy's doghouse. He selected a shiny red ornament, but when Charlie Brown put the ornament on the tree, it collapsed. I've killed it. Oh, everything I touch gets ruined. Charlie Brown walked off in despair. A few moments later, the other children arrived. Such a bad little tree, Linus said, as he wrapped his blanket around its base. It's not bad at all, really. Maybe it just needs a little love. Everyone began taking ornaments off Snoopy's doghouse. Soon, the little tree had been transformed into a festive Christmas tree. When Charlie Brown returned, he was stunned. All the kids said. And then everyone began to sing, even Charlie Brown. Charlie's Brown Christmas Story. It's one of my favorite books from this time of year, even as a child. I love listening to the music, I love hearing the characters, and I love seeing Charlie Brown and his friends discover the true meaning of Christmas. Didn't you? If you loved and want to talk about a Charlie Brown's Christmas Story, be sure to click the link below to my Instagram channel. Find the book, A Charlie Brown Christmas Story, and comment in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you, friends. Happy holidays, be safe, and Merry Christmas from me to you.
Bye, friends.